Here is how you actually use the slosher. Know your kit, know your weaknesses, and know your strategies. Apply these in a timely manner and you shall see slosher shine. Before we get started, however, warning, I am a casual and merely sharing my opinions after using this weapon non-stop for about a month. Also, many people think that the vanilla slosher is somehow worse than the washing machine blah 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 and try slosher. Why did people reply to my tweet frame one and say, don't play slosher. Many would tell you just to play sloshing machine because of its consistent hitboxes. Others say try because of faster kills. Others still say blob blobber for better accidental kills. I disagree. This weapon has its pros and cons, yes, but I do not feel it's a worse choice amongst the slosher family. You too can master the slosher in Splatoon, the ultimate weapon for an ink slinging strategist like yourself. Join us as we dive deep into the mechanics and tactics of this ink flinging powerhouse and find out how to use the slosher to claim victory. If these videos are helpful, please share and subscribe. Thank you. Number one, know the slosher's kit. The bucket itself. This is a bucket. There's more. My beloved bucket. This grand gadget boasts a graceful arch that sets it apart from other weapons in its class and the shooters especially. The slosher has a remarkable ability to reach shoring heights and conquer obstacles with ease. The arc also allows you to take down enemies who are perched atop cliffs or hiding behind walls. The slosher is truly a martyr marvel of ink warfare, a testament to the brilliant minds that have brought it to life. Sus, sus, slosher. Those arcing slashes of ink slings into some stunning strategy. First, the double dutch. One high slosh and one right on point combines at the same time to kill unsuspecting cephalopods. This is even excellent when engaging players above you. Next, curve. Cursed shots give better ink color and aim. Should you start your slosh off the aim of the opponent, it's okay, you can still move to cover the enemy. The slosh is actually multiple globs of ink, so some of it can still damage, and usually will, still apply to the enemy. Commit your aim later in the animation and you can still pick off enemy players. This is awkward. For me, I recommend solid, steady aim over and on top of your target. And you might just find yourself getting a curve shot or two automatically since you're aiming. Many people online have told me jumping will increase the range of the slosher. I, I don't think so. Remember your role. The slosher is a midline aggro. Pick a teammate and go into skirmishes side by side for best results. Assists are very much so great. Plus, positioning properly allows you to be a slosher. Sloshing over walls, over ledges, around obstacles. Pester and pick off those players perched above, especially the back lines. Knowing where to position will give you victory. Also, I feel I must defend my beloved bucket against the other weapons in its class. In my opinion, you don't have to worry about getting a direct, so it's better than the sloshing machine. It's just two sloshes they dead. If you miss with the machine, you need three. I think it's better than the try because it has rain. Also my opinion, but I like having more control than I do with the blob lobber, so I'm gonna pick the slosher over the blob lobber. Splat bomb. Say hello to this amazing sub weapon. The splat bomb is my favorite sub weapon in the game. I've had lots of practice in the previous game with the splat bomb. Predict where the enemy is going. It's very satisfying to drop a bomb on common pathways to get a free little splat, especially at the start of a match. Think about where are they going to go? Put a bomb right there and find a nice free splat throughout your match. Use your splat bomb like a wall and it will keep enemies from coming closer to you. If they do, boom! You're giving people a choice with a bomb. If there's a bomb right on top of them, they can retreat and leave the objective wide open. If there's a bomb right on top of them, they can come closer into your sloshing range. Chip damage with a splat bomb is also great. A player can be slightly damaged or hurt by the bomb and then one slosh can get a kill and it's really nice. Knowing your kit means knowing the triple ink strike. I will call it the tri strike. The tri strike is a tantalizing tool taking with three tiny booms to tantalize and throw off opponents. Use it with the utmost care around objectives to unleash its incredible impact. Also, keep the explosion orb obscured above or below. Thus will butter baffle enemies and bring the boom. I mean, you can hide the explosion from foes by putting it above them or below them, then they don't see it coming. Don't rely on the tri-strike in emergencies, it doesn't work. Even with three, it's hard to get a kill with this weapon and it's easy to dodge. When you take it out, you cannot swim and you will die if you try to use it like a panic splashdown. Heart 
two. Know the slosher's weaknesses and common mistakes, and you'll be better prepared for victory. Common mistake. Do not play the slosher like a shooter. Please, no. Instead, seek higher and wider enemies. And use the arc. Don't ignore the slosher's limited ink. It's not an arrow spray, and it's easy to run out quickly. If you have no main saver, you get about 15 sloshes. But most people will use their bomb on a full ink tank and only get around five, six, seven, depending how much you're swimming afterwards. So mind your ink. You'll run out and die. Don't play too aggressively. Avoid getting in foes' faces. Use your range. Don't be too passive. You're not a Hydra. You're not an E-leader. You need to be in between the smooching splooshes and the very introverted E-leaders. Don't waste time. With a swasher, it can be tempting to like shark underneath a ledge. And yes, it can work, but it's very important to use your strength of the arch to paint walls and the area around you so you can better push the objectives especially when there's no one in sight. Again, do not panic, try strike. Use it to push objective. Do not stay stagnant. The slosher lacks mobility, and therefore you need to move around so you don't become an easy picking for backliners or fast moving foes. Speaking of fast moving foes, don't neglect those. Take them out before they enter their effective range. Keep them at arm's length. Seize your slosher, save your style, and stay sharp. Know your strategy. We're gonna go over each of the modes. For splat zones, put sloshes over where you think people will be coming into the zone. Use your special to take the zone, but don't forget to actually actually contribute to inking this zone as well. In Clam Blitz, make sure you use your special to help it push around the basket and arch your aim over cover, especially around basket. You may just find someone waiting. Maintain your proper distance. The slosher has a specific range. Stay in that range even when the player is coming at you back up to get the kill so you can throw in your clams after they're dead. Since you lack mobility, maintaining that proper distance means you're gonna have to do a little clam dance around the basket to get that spot and the score. For our tower control, in my opinion, this is one of the few weapons that is comfortable both being below the tower looking up and also on the tower looking down. The arcs just really help being on tower and messing with anyone. Predict and pick players off before they get close. This has range. Use and maintain your range. It's really hard to kill a sploosh that's sitting right next to you on the tower. Again, try strikes belong around the objective and that includes the tower, especially in overtime. Rainmaker. Use your tri-strike to space out the objective, keep players away so you can push a podium, or keep the enemy team from pushing their podium. P -p 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 -p. Again, you lack mobility. So pay attention to your spacing around enemies and use it to gain the upper hand. Keep those pesky poking front lines at arm's length and don't let them anywhere near the Rainmaker carrier. This is really good mode for supporting Rainmaker and getting assists. In Salmon Run, boy do I love Salmon Run. Yes, this is not a high DPS weapon, but you are in charge of lessers. You can kill multiple salmons in a couple sloshes. Here are some things you can kill in Salmon Run with your arch. Steel head, steel eels. You can slosh over the body, it's okay. On special waves like Goldie Seeking, Glowflies, and motherships, slosh over those lessers and take care of them for your friends. You have range, so yes, you can take care of those mothership box thingamahingies that I forget the name for. You have an arch. So we'll go and you can hit the glowing salmon sticking out of the griller, and then the rest of the globs will fall on those pesky small fries. Happy face. And there you have it, folks. Know your kit, know your weaknesses, and know your strategies. Apply them in game and you will have victory. This slosher is a versatile and dynamic weapon that can unleash chaos upon the battlefield. Whether you're looking to control the zone, disrupt the enemy's ink flow in Rainmaker or Clam Blitz, or simply to drench your opponents in a sea of color, this slosher has you covered. If you're looking to add some sizzle to your spastoon with the slosher, be sure to give this weapon a try and hit that subscribe button. Until next time, it's a Squidman. Stay fresh, no dying. A beta, a bodie, and a bye!